Okay guys, hope you're ready for something different. This is the 112th scale Mark 85 Iron Man produced by a Chinese company. It is official. I have no idea of the name of the company simply because I can't read the writing. But I was very curious when I saw this because it is very much like a Marvel Legends figure. So let's do the intro and let's get into it. Okay, first off, let's have a look at the box. It is an official figure. It is um, by, uh, maybe that's the logo there for the company, I don't know. I got it from 16kit.com and when I saw the pictures of it, I was incredibly curious because it did look just like a Marvel Legends figure. And I thought maybe Hasbro has a factory in China and they were producing these and they were just making new packaging. But it turns out it isn't a Marvel Legends, it is different but it is quite an interesting design. Now, box-wise, you can see it's got Avengers Endgame logo. It's got the Mark 85 coming out here. It does have an official logo on there. I mean, it does have all the natural branding you would expect. This is all sort of the cut and paste logos that these companies would have been sent by Disney and Marvel that they have to use on all their packaging. And they can do some quick designs there. And we can see they've got all these figures here. I believe there was a Thanos release by this company. I think even Sharpness Prime did a video on it. So I don't know, I haven't looked online. I can't tell you if there are any more videos of this out there. There probably are, I'm sure there are. But you can see these are all the characters. I'm wondering if they're gonna actually step up and do all of these. Yeah, it's a very simple box. Opens up at the side here. Unfortunately, I've slightly torn it, <laughs> whoops. But never mind. It's only about, I think I paid $35 in total for it, including the shipping, and the shipping was fast from 16kit.com. I like the packaging, it's very functional, it's very simple, but we're really here for the figure. Let's get into it and have a look. He does come with six hands. He gets two repulsor hands, you get two relaxed hands, and you also get two fisted hands. And they're all pretty nice. However, I have had a bit of a problem putting the fisted hands onto the uh, figure itself because the wrist pegs here, they're a bit thick, which is good because you don't want them being really thin and breaking, but they are a little thick and it takes a little while to work them on. Probably a hairdryer would sort that out, just warm the plastic up a tiny bit and then it will pop on and off a little bit easier. But as we can see, these are all painted in that sort of metallic red and this is something that I'll show you a Marvel Legend Iron Man in a minute. I'll show you, I've got a Mark 50. So we can kind of compare it to that. I don't have the Mark 85 Marvel Legend yet, but I might pick it up, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm getting the hot toys of these things. So anything else pales in comparison, really. We can see the paint application is fairly good. I mean, you can see the sort of silver we're around the uh, knuckles there. Looks pretty good. Sort of slight bleed off there but not a massive amount but it's even put the sculpting into the hand here which is really cool and they've even painted the repulsors which is something sometimes the marvel legends fail to do and you get the repulsors painted on all of these and i think they've even put a little bit of blue paint in there to kind of match the style that it was in the movie which is really cool and then he gets the uh what would you call this thunder condenser i don't know what you'd do thunder concentrator piece that he uses at the end. It's quite a nice piece. It fits into the back of his uh, suit there pretty good. But I'm, I'm not entirely sure because the logic around this is that these all shoot out bits of thunder. They concentrate Thor's thunder to give him a bigger blast. It's kind of a callback to when they did it in Avengers and he sort of get, gets his suit charged up. And then he comes with this stand and this is kind of a bit of a generic clear Perspex plastic stand that they make in China. I've got loads of them for my Mezco figures because the Mezco stands are just too big, take up too much space. So I bought a load of these and uh, they work really well. It does have all this sort of articulation here, comes up, you can bend this up all the way, get some good flight poses I reckon. And they've even put the Avengers logo on there. So this is kind of, they wouldn't go this far with it if it was a KO I don't think. But it's really nice that you actually get a stand with it. That's something you definitely don't get with Marvel Legends. Okay, moving on to the figure. The reason this piqued my interest was because of the paint application. 
when I saw photos of it I was very curious because it did seem to have a really good paint application so I was really curious to see if it was just a Hasbro Marvel legend or if this was actually something new and I have to say this is definitely something new and it's really nice now what they've done I think is they've gone with the sort of silver paint overlapped with a clear red to give it that sort of metallic finish car look the gloss is really nice on it it's really bright they've also managed to put the gunmetal pieces in as well as the gold and the gold and the gunmetal are quite separate and really quite bright and i'm stunningly impressed for what is technically a marvel legend alike the paint application is far superior okay just bringing it in we can see how much shine is on there and there's details that you definitely don't get in a marvel legend like they've put the lights on the chest area here they've even put them down on the side here in blue separate the gold lines sort of go around the waist here and they don't bleed off too much everything is still quite separate you can still identify every tiny piece with the detail we can see that this part here pulls off we can pull this off and then that's where the uh, thunder condenser is probably the best way i can describe it goes but you can see they've even put details in the back of the neck they've put the gun metal and the gold on the neck there they've even put the blue lighting on the back of the helmet they've even got that sort of gun metal gray streak that they kind of gave him to make him look older He's even got this nice dip here. The only problem I think is there's a mild, mild bleed off just on the top of that helmet. Very mild, you can almost not see it, but it is there once you bring it in and zoom it in really close. They did actually put white in the eyes there, but I think it should have been slightly more bluish, which is a shame. But then you can see they've actually put a decal in the arc reactor there, just to add a little bit more depth would have been nice if they'd have been able to put a clear blue screen on the top of that. It's still more detailed than the uh, Marvel Legend. We can come down, we can see into the thighs, the paint goes off pretty well. We still see a seam there though. But yeah, not very bad. I mean, if this is just your generic cut and paste toy that you give to everybody in China, and they just put it in the stores randomly, it's pretty good. But we can see with the joints here, the gold goes in there and it's the same with the arms. It's one sort of bit gold at the top and gun metal at the bottom that's separate which is different from the marvel legend i think the marvel legend is all gold but the difference is that the uh, joint in the marvel legend actually has some lining in it so it's actually more detailed than the joints here which look a little bit more toyish i must admit and some of the issues you will get with this is that there is a slight paint removal there because obviously this isn't the marble red plastic that they usually use like me marvel legends They've actually gone in and painted this. There is slight paint chippings here. When you start to move the head, you'll see there is a small light, light paint chipping on the neck. And I think there's one here on the uh, leg as well. But it's not too bad. I actually think a bit of paint chipping on an Iron Man is pretty cool. It grounds it, makes it look a little bit more realistic. Despite this supposed to be being nanotech, I still think the paint chips really add an, a layer of detail that really impresses me and as we can see he can stand confidently on his own there's not a lot of futzing you've got to do to try and get the balance right he does stand pretty well on his own okay articulation wise we can see that the head is not a lot of movement in that head if i'm honest it goes up and down and it turns left and right but it starts to get tight around this sort of area it gets a bit rubby and you can see that on the bottom of the neck it will start to rub on that neck and take some of the paint away now the bottom of the neck is fixed to the upper torso so it is a shame that you don't have a bit more movement there because then you could not have to rely on this helmet rubbing on the neck so much when we come down to the shoulders these shoulder pieces of armor come up which is a really nice touch it's definitely not something that they have in the marvel legends figure which just has two big bulky sort of arms on the side no shoulder armor and i can understand why they did that the less moving parts and the less finer more articulated joints like this the better because if it's going for kids if kids are buying them you don't want all these bits falling off all the time you do want it to have some sort of durability so i can understand why they did it but this company have put these shoulder pieces of armor in and uh, if when they come up the arms go all the way up to about here just about 
all the way up just yep to shoulder length and then they come down there is a bicep swivel there is a double joint in the arm then there is some wrist pivot here and they can spin all the way around and when we put these shoulder pieces down you can see that they sort of fit quite snugly into place and because of that it does actually give this a better shape and it does hide those joints a little bit more but it does make some things difficult if i bring this up here say you want him to do a home alone pose just like that or holding a phone to his ear it stops the shoulder armor from coming down properly and it just sticks out and juts out quite a bit and as you can see every time i'm moving him around the legs sort of pull out a little bit they're not super loose but when you put pressure on them they can actually go out and bow out a little bit more he does have some torso movement but not a lot it goes back further than it goes forward there is no waist swivel there leg wise you can pull the legs down there which is nice and then the leg can go out that far it can go back that far there's a double jointed knee there is no thigh swivel which the marvel legends does and then there is a slight amount of ankle pivot there you can see there is some rocking it can go forward and back a tiny bit but definitely the marvel legends will definitely win with the ankle pivot and thigh swivel and just if you're wondering you can get him into a kneeling pose with the i am iron man quote but he doesn't have any infinity gauntlet gems on his hand that would have been actual cool accessories you know they're probably going to do a battle damage version so they're just holding out for that and overall i am absolutely impressed by the paint application on this guy plus the sculpting and the articulation is actually pretty good I'd still think in a lot of ways, I think the Marvel Legends kind of win in that respect. But unfortunately, the Marvel Legends definitely fails with paint application. So this is a really happy medium between super articulated SH figure arts and the simple painted but happy to play with Marvel Legends. One slight issue you're going to get is this bit here. Once that's in, it's very a bit fiddly to get out. Luckily, I have one of these sort of hot toy pieces here so it then can pop it out pretty easy so if you've got something like that it can pop out and once that's removed you can take this piece here we'll just try and slot that in yeah it goes in pretty snugly and there we go ah, stand up and here he is with the uh, thunder condenser is the word I'm gonna call it on his back because when you put the arms out in front of him they tend to keep the shoulder armor pieces all the way up to the top and it looks a little unsightly. So this is the kind of pose I've put him in. There's a little bit more ankle pivot in there than I thought. You just got to slightly wiggle it around till you get the right sort of angle and then it can sort of flex a little bit more. But um, yeah, I think definitely a Marvel Legends would win hands down on this. But aesthetics wise with posing, this isn't a bad shout and I actually quite like it. And I'm surprised that these aren't making their way over here in a more official capacity we're sort of importing them in from other sellers in china but these aren't readily available especially in the uk anyway just in stores because i think people would go nuts for these and especially this one because the paint application is really nice okay for comparison this is the mark 50 marvel legends next to him there is a little bit more articulation and a little less garishness in the shoulders on this mark 50 but paint wise the uh the uh Chinese import figure this wins hands down look at it the shine on that is unbelievable the paint application is much better there's a lot of really dull gold in this one here and the blues sort of just don't really work the uh, black wash in there highlights some of the details a little bit more but it's still a little bit meh. and then obviously they tried to put the blue glow in the eyes which I can see why these guys didn't do it now because this it just looks a little bit messy and then you've got this thigh swivel which is where this one wins as well because you can get a bit more posing out of this guy and a bit more articulation but you can see that it is fixed on this lower torso as well just like this one however this one's legs can go out further and go back up more the double joint in the knees is better but the ankle pivot wins on this and the head as well the head rock on this guy is definitely a lot better than the one you get on this but overall if you gave me a choice and for a few extra pounds more i'd take this one hands down every day next up we're going to compare him to the marvel legends rescue figure 
and uh, I actually really like these two together. I think Marvel Legends did a really great job with this rescue. It's really nice looking. There is a lot of detail, far more than I expected there to be in it. They've even put the numbers on there. She's even got her name on the back and the details with the silvery gold with the normal silver and the metallic blue aren't really over the top. There's certainly not a lot of bleed off. And honestly, they got the arc reactor color right at least. And there is a lot of posing in this. I really like this rescue figure. I think it was a good shout by Marvel Legends. And if we just move her behind him there, you can see the whole thing just looks so much better, doesn't it? That looks like a really awesome scene from Endgame. And because she's supposed to be more petite than Iron Man anyway, the size difference really isn't much of a factor in this. So I would say if you get a chance, grab the Marvel Legends Rescue because she would match up with this guy fantastically. And just for giggles, here he is standing next to the Figma Iron Man Mark 7. The Figma Iron Man Mark 7 was a really expensive purchase for me. Um, I contacted a guy I know on Facebook called Ji Peng and he actually sourced uh, an official one down for me. This is not a KO. I've, I've checked it, I've done all the research on it. I am assured that it is not a KO and I'm certain it's not. So I'm really glad that I managed to source one because I got it a lot later than everybody else did, but I had to pay through the nose for it, but I just wanted a super poseable Iron Man figure. So I ended up paying for this guy and I'm absolutely enamored with it. But you can see size-wise, this guy still wins in the height factor. But uh, if you're looking for super poseable, you will not probably find a better figure other than the Revel Tex than this Figma Iron Man. And here he is next to some Marvel Legends Spider-Man figures. We've got Night Monkey, we've got the Far From Home figure that I've done the mods with, which is the sort of matte painting with uh, the accented black lines in there. Really, really easy, simple mod to do. Just get a 0.1 millimeter uh, pen and some matte clear acrylic spray and just sort of dust this guy with some matte clear acrylic spray to begin with then draw the black lines in and around the actual grooves that they've actually sculpted in there but didn't have time to put a black wash into and then once you've finished doing all the black lines go back over them with a light dusting of the matte spray again and you get yourself a really nice looking far from home spider-man figure easy simple mod go out and buy a far from home figure and then just do those mods and you will have a fantastic figure and this is the infinity war spider-man that i think came with this mark 50 as you can see that was the mark 51 and i've got that guy standing on a mezco stand even though i slagged them off yeah i know but i've put him on that stand for now just because i wanted him in a big flight pose and normally the mark 50 stands underneath him and it looks good now the truth is because Spider-Man's a younger character, he sort of, he can fit in a lot more with this Mark 85 figure than say a lot of the other Marvel Legends, simply because he's supposed to be smaller, he's supposed to be a younger person, like a young teenage lad. So it would only make sense that he wouldn't be as big as say the Mark 85 armor, which was actually designed to fight Thanos. But looking at all these together in one big scene, I'm really glad I got this guy because he just looks fantastic and really pops with these other characters surrounding him. And here he is next to the Thor, the Dark World 10 year anniversary Marvel Legends figure. Um, I always thought that like this uh, Thor Marvel Legends figure was always a bit oversized compared to all the other Marvel Legends. He's pretty big, but it, as you can see, right next to these two, size wise, this really works. And the sort of lower reflective parts of this guy and the more matte finish to a lot of his costume works in contrast to the Mark 85 bright shiny armor. And just as a quick side note, as I'm moving these around, you can see that this is a normal generic bog standard stand. You can buy loads of these on eBay. And this is the one with the logo. And they're pretty much the same, aren't they? other than a few slight variations, including the, uh, the arm grabber here. But it's still really great just to get a stand with the figure. And here he is next to some Marvel Legend figures. Um, I tried to get Hella closer, but unfortunately she needs a stand. It's just the way the, the body was designed, I'm afraid. She kind of can't stand up very well on her own. It's just the balancing's all wrong, especially when she's got her arm outstretched holding the hammer and stuff like that. But size-wise, 
She actually works really well with this guy because she is massive next to a lot of the other female Marvel Legends. So I don't know what they were thinking there. I don't know why the sizes keep fluctuating so much with Marvel Legends. But just to let you know, Hela works really well with him. I think um, Scourge works really well and so does Korg. Korg just will fit in with anyone. Look at this guy. Just standing behind and he's quite imposing. Man, I could do this all day. Here is the Endgame Hulk next to the Mark 85. And I think they size really well together. And here he is next to some Mezco figures. And because of the bulkiness of the Mezco bodies, he kind of fits in really well. Especially if you have him in a slightly crouched posing position, the height won't be too much of a factor. Or even in a flight pose, you definitely won't be able to tell the difference. And just because I'm an absolute animal, I've stuck a DC character in there with all the Marvels because the universe divide be damned. I have no respect. Okay, final thoughts on the figure. This is a really happy medium between those really expensive high-end import 112 scale figures and the Marvel Legends range. I just think that this works really well. The paint application is far superior to a Marvel Legend. Articulation isn't as good, but is almost as good. And I think when you've got this guy standing in a collection with quite a few different Marvel Legends, you can't really tell the difference. Again, there is some height variation with all the different characters as well. And some, even with Marvel Legends, the sizes are not accurate. They're just all over the place sometimes. So if you really were on the fence about picking this guy up, I wouldn't be. This is a really nice, well-painted, well-constructed figure. It is official, it's not a knockoff, but you will wanna go with a seller that you know and is confident and you can get, actually get an official figure from rather than any of the knockoffs that will invariably come from this. Again, I'll repeat, I got mine from 16kit.com. I trust the seller implicitly. They're more than honest. They'll tell you if something's a recast, they'll tell you if something's a knockoff, or they will tell you if it's an official product, and they are honest about it. So I would go with them if you are thinking about picking this guy up. I'm not sure if there's any left. If not, you might have to go looking, but definitely hunt this one down because I think it's a really nice, really well-painted, 112 scale, Marvel Legends alike that you can put into your collection and it will fit in reasonably well okay guys hope you enjoyed the video do me a favor please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content let me know i could do more of these i normally stick to one six scale stuff but if you will be more interested in more of the 112 let me know and i'm not going to swear by telling you to f out of my cave because i'm not sure this might end up in the toy section and i've got to be good because i don't fancy youtube kicking down my door and dragging me out of my house so all i'm going to say now is bye bye